Good afternoon. I'm Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we are putting God back in business. I want to thank you for this opportunity to join us on Take Charge Tuesday. It is such an awesome day. It's a rainy day here, a rainy day in Georgia, uh, but it's a great opportunity to come on this platform because I believe you're going to feel the warmth of the sun shine through this broadcast today. Um, and I mean the S-O-N shine. Yeah. Shining through my guest already, the lovely Toby Carvana. And I am honored to welcome her back to our Take Charge Tuesday power call. This is a business power call. And I believe that you're going to be enlightened and empowered today. So I want to say thank you for joining us. And then, Toby, I want to say especially to you, I love you. And I think you are just wonderful. And I'm so excited about when I found out on uh, Friday, when I realized, oh, I know who's going to be on the platform. It's going to be Toby. It's such joy in my heart. Thank you for joining me today. Oh my goodness. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to come here and talk to people. I love it. I love it. Anyway, everybody, hello. 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 <laughs> well, this is the year of higher ground for Georgia Christian Business Network. We are going higher in him. We wholeheartedly believe that God is taking us to this higher level to experience things that we've never experienced before. So what I'd like to do is we do commonly here on a platform for Take Charge Tuesday is allow our guests, at once we promoted you leading up to the uh, actual date that you're to be our guest presenter, we promote you on paper. But this is your opportunity. Tell us who you are, Toby. Introduce yourself from your heart. Uh, let people know who you are, what you do, and why it's so important for them to know. Well, my name is Toby Carvana. Yes, like the car company. I, um, I am a professional encourager. That is my title. That's my job down here. And my job is to encourage captains of the of the kingdom, people who are leading others, who have all these people looking to you and you're always pouring into them, but you never get poured into. That's what I do. Because if you run dry, how are the people around you going to keep running fast? Mm -hmm. So that's my job. And everything I talk about comes from a point of encouragement. And so today I'll be talking about encouragement as you as you climb higher. So that's wow. The captains say that again. I captains like that. Captains of the kingdom. Captains of the kingdom. Captains of the kingdom mm. can be captains in your home, captains in your community, captains in your work, captains in your own life sometimes. So yeah, captains who people who have people <laughs> around them, people they're assigned to. And you know yes. they'll call you in the middle of the night, even no matter what's going on with you. You're the yes. person everybody turns to for help. So. Mm, I am feeling encouraged already, <laughs> you know? Yes, and energized for what's ahead. I know you have a presentation for us. You said grow as you go. Yes. And I, I love it. It's yeah. going to, yeah, grow as you go because there's a whole lot of things that happen as we're climbing higher, especially in the faith. And okay. there's, and my, my overall thing is that in order for you to go high, you have to go deep. And, and this is true. You this have to is go true. deep. And that's how climbing is. But I'm going to talk to you also about how, what climbing is spiritually, but just showing you some physical things. As the Lord uses our bodies as parables. <laughs> for me, he mm -hmm. uses our body as a parable and he talks to us as visuals. And when I talk about breathing a lot, because I believe uh -huh. we, are, we don't do enough spiritual breathing. Oh, God, this um, is good. And mm -hmm. so spiritual breathing has a lot to do with climbing, doesn't it? <laughs> it has mm -hmm. to do with how people function physically. So we're going to go in some of that so that you will understand what it really means on a spiritual level when you're climbing higher and some of the obstacles mm -hmm. you might encounter as you go. So wow. means going deeper to get higher. I love it. Going deeper to get higher. And that is technically, if you were thinking of building, you know, because my late father was a masonry contractor and a builder. And, um, you know, he taught me a lot about foundationally, the deeper you go, the more strength uh, or the uh, capacity 
the, yes. of, of what the foundation could support is how would determine how tall that building uh, yeah. could go depending mm -hmm. upon the depth of the foundation. So I love yeah. that. Yeah. And what we, and also what we're building on. So yes, just yes. Gonna touch yes. on some of these things. So I like ground. <laughs> yes. A firm found a rock. Um, yes. So as I talk to you guys, I always want you just to have, just to just change your perspective a little bit and just sort of open your minds to hearing what the Lord wants to talk about, because you can apply this to business, but mostly to your life, because you are a person, whether you're in business or not. Right. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to encourage you in your as best higher acronym. I don't have all the letters, Beth, maybe a couple of them. <laughs> hey, I've got it anytime you want it. I've got <laughs> it. <laughs> we'll share it later as it fits, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want me to start? I want you to jump right in so there. I'm going to uh, share my you. screen because mm -hmm. we just learned how to do this. I'm so happy about this. I was like, can everybody see? Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so catch awesome. your breath, going deeper to go higher. So as we climb, and then I'm just like a physical thing, you know, when you're going up something, you 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 can get out of breath. You can get uh -huh. out of breath. You know this. And a lot of times <clears throat> there is reasons for this. So we're going to talk about people, professionals who climb. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. When you as you go higher. There's something that happens to you physically. You get altitude sickness. And the higher you climb, the thinner the atmosphere gets. So your breathing that you used before, like the breathing you might use for running, uh -huh. is, 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 it, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> Sometimes we keep doing the same things we were doing as we go higher, thinking that's what brought us to this point, but it's not uh -huh. going to take us further. So we run wow. out of steam because the higher altitude the different you have to breathe. Wow. Understand that how you different. And there's a reason for it. And in my mind, it's like God's like saying, okay, so the air changes and it gets less of the oxygen. So you have to breathe a different way to be able to use that oxygen. When you're running, like you're running, you have to have uh -huh. a, you have to have a lot of breathing. But the higher you get, it's not so much how much you breathe, but how better you breathe. Whoa, how better you breathe. How better That's you breathe. Mm. So when you think of spiritual breathing, put that in your cap for a second. Sometimes when we are doing things in the faith and we have things called of God for us to go higher, like Beth's saying, we think we can just keep doing all the things we used to do and just maybe do more of it. And maybe that'll help us get further. And it doesn't. <laughs> so it doesn't. We get out of, we run out of steam. We get this altitude. It's like, oh, I'm up here and now I'm, now I can't even know what's going on. And you get disoriented because in altitude, because you're not breathing properly, you can get very disoriented quickly. Mm, you can get this. That's what makes this bad. It's sort of like, yes. As Lord, you told me to get this done. You told me to start this business. You told me to put this out. You told me to go to this conference. And now I can't even, I can't even get it. It's everything. I can't even see my way clear around anything. Well, maybe you have altitude sickness and you need oh. a different way of doing what brought you there. Mm. So we're going to talk about breathing at a higher level. <laughs> um, Another thing about climbing difference between running and getting further in the faith and going higher in the faith, it's a different position. Mm. It's a weird thing about when you climb. Sometimes you can walk, but a lot of times you have this motion. Beth, do this for me. This motion here, you're doing this, which means that you're climbing higher requires a different type of position. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That means that sometimes in my mind that you're like, wait a minute, I got to get on my knees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beth, yeah. Like, you've been saying yeah. this here. You're going to have to get on your knees. And when you get on your knees, the exertion of your body is different. Yeah. And your breathing automatically works in rhythm. Yes. Right? It automatically works in rhythm. I love it. And you have a different way when you're going higher. Uh-huh. Okay, uh -huh. so it's a different, that's why I like the Bible says we, with all kinds of prayers and supplications because we have different ones. We don't have the same format for everything that's going on in our lives. 
the all time. Oh my goodness. But these, it also reminds me that when you're climbing higher in Christ, you have to remember that you're just a baby. You had to oh go back goodness. to the position of being young again. This is something we don't we don't quite grasp, and it's hard for me to grasp too. But uh -huh. more mature you get in the faith, the younger you actually become. <laughs> oh okay got it here, got it got it like we want to think that okay we got to this point we became let's say senior dp okay we got to this point and now we're going to be even taller no actually you're going to be back on the ground <laughs> and you're going to be crawling out of baby because you're always growing and growing. Mm. you can't grow grown people god can't grow grown people no because you if you're grow, already grown you already grown what is he growing oh. so don't don't despise your immaturity in some ways. Not always now, mm. you know this. But in some yeah. ways, accept the fact that you are still a child, even when he takes you higher. Because then he can continue to grow you for that position to go even higher. That's what I mean, grow as you go. Some of us don't want to grow. We want to get and arrive. You, you know, he encouraged us to remain teachable. Yes. And, but if you already know everything, there's nothing he can teach you. There's a lot he desires to teach you yes. that he wants to teach you. Yes. But if you're already all knowing, then what is there for him to do? And he's such a gentleman, right? Yes. Yes. He's like, don't you understand? And this is something he's been teaching. Don't you understand that you just getting started? Yes. You think you at this point, because we really get, because this, you know, Eric, we get to this age that you know how much I was like, God don't care how old you are. He don't care about your age. He wants oh, you to grow good, in grace. He wants you to be yes. able to come out the pampers and then walk yeah. and crawl. He wants you to do this spiritually, but don't ever forget that what he's taking you is you growing in him. You are never going to be as old as Jesus. So just stop. <laughs> Love so that. I think this, this to me, this visual helps like, wait a minute, the higher I go, the smaller I get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and and, and when you I get, go. when you really understand that and truly embrace that, mm -hmm. that's the opportunity for you to be at that peace with God, to know that. And you want to surrender every time because the more we surrender, the more we allow him to drive. Him yes. to God, yes. him to provide, the more peace we get that is not us. Yes. We don't have to manufacture our growth. No. We don't have to no. go back and count the rings in our tree. We don't yes. have to bring, uh, a client of mine said, I, I don't have to bring all my credentials. No, this is not, this is Holy Ghost work. Holy Ghost, yes. your credentials are great and they helped you over there, but this is Holy Ghost work. Oh yeah. You need his you need his uh, uh his his certificate certification. Holy you, Spirit you, certified, right? You know what I call it? it that that he, all he the primary thing of course is obedience, but the primary thing that he wants for us is to continue to show up for him. Yes. He, he'll give us the words that we need to speak, even as we view the slides that you have before us. You know, you have a baby on, on my left and a, on my mm -hmm. right is a full grown man. And they're in the same stance of, of, of going higher. And what you're saying to me, because you said a new perspective, is regardless at what stage of life that you're in there is always an opportunity for you to excel for you to elevate for you to go higher in him and the opportunity is in both of those situations um i see the baby is obviously lying flat you know on a floor surface and the upright position of the uh, man climbing upward okay it's, it's an upward climb. It's an upward. And I'm thinking about how Paul said, I press towards the mark. If you look at his stance, and I'm going to let you teach your whatever you have, because I'm That's gleaming. Amazing. You asked me to look at this thing, and I'm looking at it. Look at his stance. You yes. know, he's got one leg that is bent, and 
the, the posture is it is it is is stretching him it's yes, definitely it's, stretching him and so what i glean from that is we're going to be stretched now what i also have to say and then i'm park it with you is there's a level of safety on the left mm -hmm. and there's a level of risk on the right mm -hmm. god's requiring more of us because until we learn to trust him he provides that flat safe surface Come but on, when you're really ready to go higher in on, him, you're gonna have to stretch. You're gonna have to have a leap of faith. You're gonna there's gonna be trouble all around you. And if you misstep, you probably are gonna fall. But your confidence is that if you continue to look up until the hills from which cometh your help, don't look down. Because yeah, if you look is. down, I believe that's going to cause you to fall. But if we continually look up, because that's where his strength's coming from. Toby, you're a mess. Go, Come on, girl. Well, you are. You nailed to Look up, pressing on. There's two things I want you also to see is one, back to the H and higher. It is a position okay. of humility. Yeah. Smaller than your circumstance. It is absolute humility. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, the other thing is you us. can see on that leg of his, there's a rope, a little uh -huh. rope. Uh -huh. so even though he slipped, that rope's going to hold. Understand that even though you might slip, Christ is going to hold. He's going to That hold rope, is gonna, he's got you. He that is able to keep you from falling. Mm. You may you may slide, but you're not going to fall. You're not going to fall. You're not going to fall. He is able and... to keep you from falling. Mm. Okay, so Beth just did, yeah, she... I love it because my stuff is always like this. My stuff is always a workshop. Miss Beth Copeland told me that it's a workshop and I don't give you answers. I let you find your answers. Yeah. Um, so yeah. my, my old, my late pastor, Dr. Charles Stanley fight all your battles on your knees and you win every time. And that's a beautiful picture of that. On your knees and you win every time. Why? Cause it's a per it's, it's, it's to me the, the influence the epitome of humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Oh, yeah. Right? Because yes. that's our right, that's our joyous position. See, we always mm. think that's what he's going to knock us down when we get too big. No, humbling ourselves under the righteous hand of God is actually where we are the happiest and safest and best and most productive. Wow. Because there's nobody else we should humble ourselves to but God. Right, right. Because right? A, a, a haughty spirit, mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge sometimes is going alone. I got this. I can do this. I, 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 I. Uh oh, let me be quiet. <laughs> you give my whole hear. presentation because yeah. I'm so glad because this is confirmation, Beth. I tell you, I don't know until I know. When he says something, you just have to do it. Okay. Yeah. So you understand it's going to climbing high requires a different type of position. And, and that can be physically, but really in here, in here. Okay. It also, believe it or not, climbing high requires a different type of breathing. Now, when I talk about spiritual breathing, I'm talking about time with God. I go back to Genesis that man was made completely whole. The human being had all the parts physically perfectly done. Everything was there. There's no reason that creature couldn't get up and walk around like the rest of the creatures. But God waited to have everything perfect to tell man that there's one thing you need and it's my breath. And when God breathed on man, he became a human being. Okay. Yeah. But that to me, God's breath. And I always say there's no reason for God to breathe except that he wanted to pour himself into you. He doesn't go around breathing all day because he's not us. And when he breathed in us, he was, that was us. We inhaled. That was our first act of worship. That was what we were created for was to be. And therefore <sighs> we don't spend enough time in the being of us, but we spend a lot of time doing and being active. And that became our idea of living, but it's not. Busyness no. is not living. Being mm -hmm. is living because mm -hmm. he has made you alive in Christ. So you have been breathed on. 
and you are now a being. So spending time with God means he's able to fill you with love, his love, his power, everything he, that you need from him. And we don't spend enough time doing that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We spend a lot of time, what I do say, do everyday breathing and everybody just jumps up. But we we don't spend enough time just breathing to be filled by him, not for any purpose, except Could to, you to commune with him. Yes. Would you speak on busyness again? Oh, and I know goodness. in busyness. personal sessions with you, oh, my goodness. Uh, we've talked about this uh, and where uh, you have provided that level of coaching for me. Uh, because I'm a captain of the, what is it? You're a captain of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. Yeah. Okay, I just learned that. There's lots of captains. She didn't there's tell me that. In coaching, it's a war, but, right? We're in yeah, war. Yeah, so there's yeah, a lot of captains. I like in that. Yeah. Uh, but in some of our sessions, you've helped me to work through busyness. Busyness. We believe that the more activities we have, and I show sometimes the leaves of a tree, and I'll talk about trees next. But we really think trees are most productive when they have a lot of leaves because we can see activities. So we say you're busy and, and busy is not a, a badge. It, it, busy is not a badge. Busy is actually a trap because you're not really, really doing what you were sent here to do. You're just doing a lot of things. And we value that over simply what we would say not doing. We mm -hmm. would call it not doing. I call it actively resting. And the example I always give is Martha and Mary, because mm -hmm. Martha, you know, I, I always say I, that's my girl. But I love Martha. Martha's in the house. Jesus is in the house. Martha's cooking dinner. She can hear Jesus. It's nothing wrong. What's wrong, with Martha? Cooking, getting ready, and just like us, we we meditate. We have our prayer studies. We go to church. We do our Bible studies. Jesus is in my house right now. I, what am what what what's wrong with me going around doing things? But at one point in time, Mary is not doing things. All she's doing is sitting at the feet of Christ. And I imagine this, and he is breathing on her. Wow. And she is not doing it so she can go help Martha. That's why Martha wow. comes in and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's supposed to be helping me. You know, what are you doing? But she is simply enjoying the father, breathing on her, Christ, breathe, just filling her with his love, with everything he has for her, for her, just for her. And so the reason I say that, I call that actively resting in the Lord. When right. we're not doing our spiritual work, so going to church is a job, it's work. It's not, it's not you know, like rest. So we're, we're, we don't take time to do, a, to, to actively rest in God. So he can fill us and empower us and just love on us. And then we run around trying to give people love when we haven't got the love from him to love ourselves. So that's what I mean by just being busy and avoiding sitting still before the Lord for no reason except just to be in communion with him. And we it? find ourselves pouring out of an empty, empty. vessel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. We, because we, we haven't been filled. Mm -hmm. We have to take time. And this takes time. I'm, I got to think about it later. <laughs> Thank you, Beth, for showing us. It's coming later. But it, we, we don't understand that when we talk about loving the neighbor, we skip ourselves. We're just thinking like the Lord pours and we give. The Lord pours and we give. But we can't, we we have to allow it to settle into our whole beings. Like with breathing, go all the way down the deep part of our lung. Before this is we good. Exhale and exhale. And we exhale so much that we're just running around oxygen deprived, which when we start to climb, I'm not sure how we're going to climb unless we change our breathing because it's oxygen deprived, right? Mm. So you're running around trying to give your, and then the other thing, we begin to think of ourselves as a source instead of a resource. That's another reason we get so mm. big because suddenly we're the source of somebody's happiness. We're the source for their moment. We're the source for that, that coming up with a solution. We're the source for this. We're the source for that. Really? No. No, no we're not. So you're, no. and I would say you're, you're overbooked because you think you're the source and you're not. Wow. You have every right to say, I'm going to take this time and go sit with God for a day, an hour, whatever he requires. And, and, and being the source, nominating or taking the role as the source means that you are responsible for everything, for the provisions, for making yes. it happen, however it needs to happen. Yes. I don't want that. You don't. I don't want that. No. 
And that's why we have to take step back and think about this. We really do because one of the tricks of our is, I always tell people, you can be doing a lot of good things and your great thing never happens. You were made for a great thing. Climbing higher means you have to be a great thing. I mean, Lord's like to me, the reason you're going higher so your light will shine further. <laughs> but if you bog down with all the good things, then where, how are you going to get to the greater thing? No, greater no. Things that you will do. So that's wow. what I mean by busyness. Busyness is also often a distraction. It's nothing wrong with having several things to do. But mm -hmm. when it becomes, uh, like you said, like Beth, when you become like the one who only one who can, you got to check yourself. And, and, and I want, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I thank God for this because people think, well, then that means I don't need to be doing anything. I need to stop, cancel this, cancel this. No, it's how you do it, how you approach your work. It's what you said just a, a second ago is in response to my talking about one owning things. God does. Every time I turn around, there's a new adventure, a new opportunity on my plate. But we've got to learn something. I'm going to throw this out here is how to delegate. Everything doesn't have to have your touch on it. And part of the rest in our relaxed breathing is knowing that God's equipped other people to do things. You know, you have yeah. to challenge growth around you as well. If you hold on to everything and you think you're the only one that has the way to be able to implement these things, you um, you don't allow other people to walk in their giftedness as well. And, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm finding myself lately and God will put you into the space of working with someone like Toby, as I do, or he'll put you in the place of where you've got uh, personal circumstances that are pressing and that you just don't have time, but he'll cause you to be able to understand what your leadership role is, yes. okay, That's is so helping other people to be able to grow in yes. their leadership role. Yes, and that's the difference between a boss and a leader. A okay. leader will always <laughs> create new leaders. A boss is just bossy. There, there is nothing growing out of that that for them. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, Beth, that is the thing that we have to understand and learn. And so as you begin to make choices, because when you climb, yeah. <laughs> that's another thing with climbing, you can't run. When running, you can go this way, you can go that way. You can run over here, you can run over there. Running is different. What got uh -huh. you here, what got you to this point is different from what's going to take you, okay? And that's why a lot of people uh, don't really achieve their highest potential because they're still thinking they're going to do the same thing they did, just more. Yeah. yeah. And then they don't release. That's the other thing. Uh, uh, a good leader always releases the, the potential in other leaders. See, if you, if a lot of times people think when they get promoted on a job, I know this all the time at my job, is that they get promoted and they just continue doing what they did. So the people around them are not being used. They just think they got to like, in my profession, they got to do more ads or they got to write more. They, they're going to actually do the, the nuts and bolts down at the ground level work that they brought, got them to that point. They're going to start doing the nuts and bolts stuff when that's not what's going to keep them climbing. Right. So you'll, I, I love it. You'll, you'll be in groups and people will say, well, I, they don't want me to do anything. Everything I do, they have some five things to say about it. That's because they still think they're not promoted. They still think they're a junior person. And what you're talking about is a mentality. Yes. You yes. know, yes. Um, the promotion or the transition mm -hmm. to higher level starts here. In, in your mindset. Yes. And uh, sometimes if you're still on the mentality of the promotion has come, God has already said, he's opened the door. You're just walk, walk up the steps. You just got to go up the staircase. The opportunity is if I take a step up and then I'm looking back to what I left and still trying to control what I left um, yes. is the opportunity for us to be confused we don't know which way we're going we're going up or we're going down you know um what you have to be settled on 
is where I'm going. Yes. What I really am asking God to do in my life. If I'm really t asking him to take me to higher ground, that means that I'm going to have to do what Toby said. I've got to release some stuff. You got to release Not just, it. right, right. Talk you got to release, me. listen, you got to stop. I keep saying that, I'm going to say it. There, what you do every day, like what you, what you, okay, let's take running because this is a different type of breathing. This will help. If you ever walked or ran, you know that there's a certain breath you get. In. You got to, and the more breath you get in there, the more yeah. you get energy and you get walking and there's a, there's an energizing breath. However, this is from, from professional climbers, people who do this for a living, basically. The best breath for, for climbing is a resting breath. And it's really interesting to me. I looked this up. It's a resting or relaxed breath. It is intentional. It's efficient. It's soft. And it's very relaxed, even to the point that as you do this type of breathing, and we'll do one, you have to like release your shoulders. And this is on the side of a mountain. <laughs> You're holding on a mountain. Release your shoulders. Release your eyes. Your eyes have to go soft. Your mouth has to go soft. And your breathing has to be very soft and long. Wow. It has to be absolutely calm because that's the only way you're going to get enough oxygen into those muscles from that thin air in order to get the energy to climb. So a climbing breath is resting breath. It's relaxed. And when you know that you're not, so once you get in that, they can, they, once they, you start practicing that and you have to hold it. So you take a deep, you sort of, it's like, you want to be soft. So your shoulders are relaxed, like relax your shoulders, like then relax your mouth, relax your jaw, you relax your eyes, let them go soft. And you also, I love this part. You pull up, you breathe through your lips first. So your lips have to be pursed like you're like sucking through a straw. And as you do that and you get in that rhythm, mm. you become calmer and calmer wow. and calmer, right? I love that you have to purse your lips because that means you're not talking. When you're walking and stuff, people all say, if you can talk, then you're breathing correctly. If you can say something to somebody, you're breathing correctly. But not when you're climbing. You shouldn't have to talk because you're Lips. God oh is, my God! None of us. Yeah, yeah, Isn't we we got to talk about this a minute because. Well, well, let me let me go. Let me go. Uh, let me longer. Okay. Let me finish up okay. Let me talk. And then we then okay. you can talk. Okay. So, this is the relaxed, calm breathing that will power you to climb and get the oxygen you need. Now, this is something that you have to practice because a good climber, one who's going places, does that from the first breath. Mm. does it from that's what they do from the first breath that's how they're able to do this and to me the perfect picture of that is the um be anxious for nothing ah. this is be anxious for nothing right but by prayer and supplication make your requests known the god of all peace will guard your heart and mind in christ jesus right that is the picture of not being anxious a lot of times we're climbing and what are we doing we are looking at, we are so anxious going to the next level in Christ that we can't, he can't, it's like, that's not the breathing because the breathing, like I said, the running that you did to go through all the things, he's not saying that now. He wants you intentional and soft. I like that softness yeah. because if you see a good leader and you can see it in a leader, a real leader is soft. An arrogant leader is the one that looks like they you know what I'm saying? So that was, I was going to say, so your breathing is different for climbing. And when you are still trying to breathe the way you did, you can see it with Bessa. It's a mind that you, you, you trying to still be the, the junior prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Oh my goodness. You just let me know when I can, because girl, we got to unpack some of all that. Oh we can my unpack. God. I have some more things to go through, but you can stop where you Let's let's pause for a second okay. on this particular side, okay. because 
the, the God gives the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And your slide suggests at the top, climbing higher requires a different type of breathing. That's what we learned for that. But then you go over and the first check is resting or relaxed breathing. Okay, resting or relaxed breathing. Um, the opportunity is so important here that you're saying climbing higher requires, and I'm going to skip, resting. Mm -hmm. yeah. relax yes. who I mean really who would put higher with resting and that that's a God thing a he God he thing. wants us he says take upon me but my yoke is what yeah it's light easy. easy easy and he he says he gives us new mercies every day, but he's calling us to him. Come unto me. Yes, Come unto me. Rest. God wants relationship with yes. us. Yes. And, and when you, you want to go it, higher, you you've gotta got to person. go develop a greater, stronger, yes. intimate relationship with him. We want to go higher, we say, but we get father and father and father removed from coming to the father yes he said call upon me yes. and i will show you great and mighty things that you know not of but i want to go here i want to go to here and you're getting father and he's there all the time waiting he wants to promote you so i love this sign and you said um deep intentional efficient Relax breathing. Relax breathing. Because when you come to the Father, and this is why I like all kinds of prayers, all kinds of prayers, but this spiritual breathing level is your confidence in Him. You are relaxed in the presence of God. You're not, you're mm. not, you're at you're at a point that you just say, Lord, I'm just gonna sit with you. I'm just gonna rest in you, and I'm gonna trust you that whatever needs to be done will be done according to your will and your purpose. I'm going to sit with you. I'm not going to try to go out and muster up some, some stuff. And actually, I feel the best there. It feels like, guys, I would say to me sometimes, it feels like when the guys were on the Mount of Transfiguration, like, let's build some houses. Let's put some houses up here, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of relationship he wants with us. He takes all of us as babies, right? We're babies. Right. Sometimes right. We're here, we pout. But this one with a, with a winged mother, that's my scripture right now, as a child with a, a winged child with his mother. That uh -huh. scripture says a weaned child with his mother means that that child's not looking for milk. <laughs> that child just wants to lay on their mama. And yeah. that's the part of resting in him. Well, can we say we truly rest in him when we're in prayer? Like there are some prayers we can't, we travail in prayer, but there should be parts of our week, parts of our day where we can truly sit and rest and have relationship with him. And he can be silent and we're cool. You know what I mean? So I yeah, love it, love it. That to me is being. I angel. love it. You want to oh, pack wow, some more? Or you want to move on? I, I I'll move on, but okay. this is you know um. Mm, girl, go ahead, go Amen. ahead. Jesus, this is all good. So that's not being anxious. Oh, and I can say, check yourself. This is a way to check yourself. If you're really doing the right spiritual breathing, you should not be anxious. You should be soft. Your face should be soft. Your shoulders should be soft. You've seen it. When seen I feel it. tense, Toby, yeah. and when I am really challenged, like I say, I'm working on multiple things and I've got multiple projects to, but right. not trying to work on them all at the same time. But sometimes when I get into that state, even use that as an example, I know I have to calm myself and said, you've taken the rings and you're trying to drive, yeah. you don't need to drive. You need to get where Toby's talking about right now. Yes. Any of those, I have to put this out there, that may be in a position of trying to make it happen in your strength, more often than not, check yourself, like Toby said, sit with yourself. Mm -hmm. You've taken the rings. Yes. And it, it, it may have been subtle, it may have been, I'm sure, not intentional, mm -hmm. but you've taken them more often than not, Toby. I'm going to let you tell 
but no, um, push back it's on what true. I'm saying. No, no. And yeah. uh, because this is what I'll find That's with true. myself is that I'm trying to make something happen in my strength. I'm telling you what I've learned and what Ted, Terry's even confirmed in some of our one-to-ones, and she'll talk about what she offers there. But is best thing you could do, and it makes absolutely no sense. It gets get up, go take a walk, go yeah. do something fun, relax, go play with your grandkids, or call somebody up, say, let's go to lunch, yes. my treat. Just yes. get away from it. Yes. Because, and then come back, go into prayer, Spend time with God. God, I relinquish. You show me. Yes. And I'm talking to I'm talking to Beth Copeland. I'm telling you, this is where That's I've had to land. Amazing. And I'm telling you, the more energy that has come from those opportunities, and I mean, even sometimes just to call somebody up and say, How can I help you? Makes no oh, sense. I've got this stuff going on, I gotta get done, and I'm calling you up to ask you. How can I help you? Because that comes, yes, because that's how we're supposed to function. But I get to that. But yes, you you check yourself because we are very susceptible to that. We're very susceptible to put our hand out and think that suddenly they know like a kid. Like if you go, if, okay, this is my example of a child. If you take your child to the corner and you're holding their hand, the child just assumes they can let go and run. And you're like, no. You may let go, but I'm not. That's how God is with us. <laughs> you may think you out here, you're not doing anything. So anyway, yes. Okay, let's go to some more because I think Beth's going to have more to say and I want, I want to hear what she has to say because this helps me too. So your breathing, check your breathing. Now, here's some breathing lessons. This gets into sort of unpacking stuff. Some breathing lessons from God's highest climbers, <laughs> which is trees. I think trees are the best thing ever. And I always say that trees... You know, the root system of a tree matches our lungs. So I always say the trees breathe underground because when they bring in the carbon monoxide, they let oxygen out so we can breathe. But they breathe underground most of the year because, you know, their leaves go away and they're breathing underground. So so this thing about trees is so amazing. So let's go through some breathing lessons from trees about root, about the root. So. This is coming from my scriptures, Ephesians 3, and, and it says, I pray you being rooted and established in power, in love may have power. That's the first part of it. So there's a thing about a tree. It's called a tap root. When a plant grows, it's an anchor root. And every tree starts with a root that provides stability and absorption. Okay, that's just the basic of how a tree grow. Like Beth was saying, your foundation is important. You have to be in good soil, all that good stuff. But that tap root goes down first to anchor you. And we have to make sure our tap root is anchored in who? Christ. Because if it's not anchored in Christ, if it's anchored in your credentials, if it's anchored in the people you know, if it's anchored in all the things you have accomplished, you're not going up any higher. You're going mm -hmm. just so mm -hmm. far like all the other humans. Okay. But that anchor has to, that tap root has to be an anchor. It has to be there. The interesting wow. thing about a tap root is that it's the beginning of your growth. <laughs> it's the beginning of a tree's growth. And it is there, it stabilizes, and it, it brings an absorption. But after a while, a tree doesn't use that tap root like that, not for the growth part. It's the sustenance, wow. part, but not the growth part. Because down, if it goes too far, <laughs> if it goes too far down in the soil, it's no more oxygen down there. Wow. I know, wow. right? God doesn't leave anything to chance. So this is very interesting. Make sure that your anchor is in Christ, that you have been, you are being rooted. Understand that being rooted takes time. And that's why I say everyday spiritual breathing, Martha work is fine. That's what we should be doing. That's how we become rooted and established. That means you found wow. your position, you found your place, you're anchored in Christ. Now you can grow. A, wow. Right? A tree is yeah. a creature because it grows both up and down at the same time. So don't be don't be so weirded out that sometimes you're trying to like, but but I don't have this part of my growth. I don't have this thing to add to the business. I don't have you're growing up and down at the same time. So just get used <sighs> to growing up and down at the same time. <laughs> That's how I that love works. that. What a concept to right? understand. So you're, and yeah. so you're gonna and trees don't stop growing until they stop growing. So just understand that. But back to the age thing. So I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power. 
So don't skip that part. Understand where your power is. Understand that that anchor root only grows down into Christ. Then you're anchored. It's not going to keep going down. Sometimes we get so, but now, okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. So remember that about that. So that's the breathing roots of a tree. Now, the other part is being rooted in right relationships. So it says, it says that you be with power together with all the Lord's holy people. Now we're going to talk about growth to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. So you as a kingdom cat, you growing in this way, you are in the love of Christ. All of us are functioning in the love of Christ, right? So I showed you the redwood trees, which are the tallest trees. And their, their root system is intertwined with other redwood trees. They literally have a chemical reaction with them. In fact, if there if there's a tree that's if there's a tree that may be not doing well, even if the tree gets cut down, they'll all grow around that tree and give it life and resusc resusc resuscitate it. They'll oh, man. And give it water because that's how closely knit they are together. And they actually hold each other up because those are the roots across the ground. So they grow wide. So the tap root goes down into Christ and then the roots go out to the other trees. And that fact, they are dependent on each other. They are no single trees and only redwoods have the strength and ability to support other redwoods. Understand that. This group that you're assigned to that's in your level of climbing, we, we, we may talk about that a little bit. You are in a, in a group and your relationships, the right relationships, be rooted in those. You can't root yourself to a bush, right? I love it. Right? Love so it. you are rooted yes. together in this, these Come on. trees that go up. You know, I mean, a redwood is so high that the whole environment of animal and plant and insect life is completely foreign to the rest of the earth. That's how high up they are. There is a whole- Oh, Toby, up there. Toby. So, this idea that you get in the right relationship, this is part of Beth Hire, rooted in right relationships, make sure you're in the right group. The other thing is understand that like, all the climbing things that you see, all the visuals, even some I showed you, it's one person. That's not how kingdom works. Kingdom is not about one leader, like one person up there and we all like in corporate. That's not how, that's not how kingdom works. Kingdom is several leaders grounded together, right? Oh, and they Toby. have all their. It's, you see, mm. we, we are we we are grouped together. We are together so we can understand how high and wide and deep and long Christ love is. I, I have to interrupt you. Jerome okay. Wilson says I'm screaming over here, <laughs> and this is hot, hot, oh. hot. Hot, and it is. I'm telling you, okay, so the higher acronym, I got to throw it out here go right ahead, now. So a heart of humility is where she's already started ministering to us from initial. Okay, so we're talking about higher as an, as an acronym. Inseparable integrity, right? Gracious mm -hmm. giver. And then the other, the, the gracious givers and the other second H, okay, is honor him in your health. And then the E, exemplary execution. And the R, where she's landed right now, is revenue, relationships before revenue. Because we want to go higher. And the first place we want to go higher is in finances, in our revenue. We want more revenue. And that's good. But what God says, you need to park the revenue piece and start embracing the relationship piece. And I love it that you said rooted in the right relationships because too often, and I'm looking at these redwoods that you put out here. First of all, I have to tell you, Toby, there's a book that is unfinished that is talking to Jessica Banner this morning about our unfinished like books. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But but mine, one of the unfinished books that I have is Trees Speak, and I'm putting my title out there, so don't y'all go use it, but I've got all kinds of pictures from my travels with, of trees that have spoken volumes to me, that trees speak, they do that, yes. they do that, these trees and what you put, redwood, the tallest trees, you know, but what I like is, is their root system intertwined with other redwood trees, 
Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying by that in relationships, when you are a leader and you're called to go higher, you need to be associated with other leaders that understands where you are. When you are um, an eagle and you find yourself in a chicken coop, you need to get to moving. You need to get to stepping because they can't nurture, nurture you and give you the nutrients that you need to be able to grow higher. And one of the things that you said here is redwoods have the strength and ability to support other redwoods. Only redwoods. When, uh, only, only. Let me start that out. Only. Okay, so what you're looking for right now in relationships that are not aligned and from people, let me just break it right down for you. What you're doing, you're asking people to give you something that they don't have to give. You're asking people to pour into you to confirm, affirm, you know, what God has said to you. And they're looking at you like, why are you doing that? What is that sense does that make? Because they don't have it to give. See, what she's saying here... We have to understand in relationships that God has assigned people to you for every level that he's taking you. There's someone that is reaching back to grab your hand to pull you up. It's him. It's in representation of him. But sometimes we we want to stay in the norm and the calm in the in in the knowing. And even though the relationships are no longer serving us well, we yet still choose to hold on because of fear of what's up there. What God is saying to you, I'm calling you up just a little bit higher. Will you trust me that I've already prepared this place for you? I've already had people that are assigned to you that are going to entreat you the way that I want you to be treated. And I'm not saying, oh, I don't have any more use for those people here and there. No, what I'm saying to you right now is that allow the God to do the shift and he'll see your signs. But this is one thing I'm going to caution you. If you stay too long, it's going to be up. It's going to be some, something going to go down. It's not going to be pretty. When God is calling you higher and he's asking you to shift and come on up a little bit higher. You stop worrying about how they're going to judge you, what they're going to say about you. Leave that to God. The outcome belongs to God. You continue to focus on God. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on him. Make sure you remain blameless. But you got to come up higher. I would say, Beth, that I would say the other reason people stay stuck is false okay. humility. There's a pride of that that you are the leader you're the person in that that other place that everybody just thinks like i said the junior prodigy you you, you get too attached to your image in that area like that baby thing i showed you you get way too attached to 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 you receiving the accolades that it becomes a false humility which is not yes you're like oh yes. that's not me oh no but that's not him <laughs> True humility understands that God can make you greater, but you're not the greatest one. Ooh, ooh, right? ooh. See, this is what I like about my circle. Okay. And I want to talk about community for just a second, Toby, because you need to be in the right community that beats you. And if you say I'm making a plug for uh, GCBN or NACWI, then so be it. I'm okay with that because I'm confident in what God's given for me to do. But you need to be in a circle, in a community. And I'm not talking about a cult, nor am I talking about, what do you call them? Um, you know how people have these little, uh, what do you call them? I used to know clicks or something oh, like cool. that. It's another word I was thinking of. Yeah. But just say a click or a cult. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about another C word. I'm talking about a community. Community. A it's community that's of that's women that know who they are in him, of men that are settled yeah. on uh, kingdom growth, and they know that they are called to be a leader, and they're not ashamed to speak truth to another man. That's what I love about men of GCBM. We're about to start 
pulling that together and promoting that. We're pulling together those leaders. You know, Jerome Wilson over is over there. He's one of our men of GCBN that speaks volumes into other men. We, we got to make sure that we're in a community, not that we're ashamed of who God's called us to be, but that we are more about celebrating who God's called us to be through other people as well, that we're ushering them to where he's called them to be, that we're there to support. To, to Yeah, and I mean support. I'm not talking about pretentious support. I'm talking support that says... This person over here is doing a great work. And I can get and usher them to that new level that God's called them to be. And it takes nothing off of me. Yeah. What do you say, Toby? We got to go say, over yeah, a few Red minutes. Roots, because, they don't compete. Mm -hmm. Red Roots don't compete with each other. They cooperate mm -hmm. with each other, right? And mm -hmm. they also, they're baby Redwoods. So it's not like it's just the, it's just the old ones. So make sure you're growing even if it's a baby, you need around be around the right, the right soil. Um, right. I had like one more, but I think we're at time. Right. We we started a little bit late, so we're gonna okay. go over about five minutes. So put that one out there and then we'll close up. Okay. So the last thing is so we talked about breeding. Let's go back a little bit. We talked about the fact that it's a different position when you're climbing higher for your breeding, you have to humble yourself. And know this and understand this, that God's going to work through you, but you're not the source, you're, you're the resource. The other thing we talked about is that you have to be anchored in Christ. Your taproot has to be there and only go there. And your taproot doesn't have to go anywhere but down into Christ, and that takes time. So continually, continually grow in that area. We also talked about the fact that you have to be rooted in right relationship with other Redwoods. <laughs> Even if you're a baby redwood, you need to be with the other redwoods and that redwoods don't compete. They actually help one another with their root system. Even if somebody's sick, I think this is important. Even if another tree's not well, they will send nutrients and help to that tree. They don't cut it off. <laughs> oh my God. And the other thing is what happens when you have breathing problems? I have two on here. We have always have breathing problems. One of the worst ones that help that messes you up when you're climbing is hurried breathing. Again, trying to run this thing. Um, you have to do the weight on breath, I call it, the pneuma, the Holy Spirit's filling breath. That's the cure for that because that's where your time gets. I want to say this very concisely here. Christ had came after the resurrection and breathed on them the breath of life and they you know, received him. But then he said, wait. So they already had breath from Christ. But then he said, wait, not the next day, not the next day, but on the day of Pentecost, what happened? Suddenly, a sound like a Russian wind, right? The violent wind, and he was filled with Holy Spirit. So we have to learn how to wait patiently. See, we want to hurry to the climbing, but any climber will tell you if he makes a sudden move, it's not a good one. <laughs> so in order to, you have to, you have to learn how to not, to make that relaxed breath be a part of your life, not just something you do to get to a certain point. So everybody follow me? So, and in that, listen to the suddenly. In, in time, it was suddenly happened. We think time is something we control. Time is something God controls. He don't take a minute. He can take a second and your whole business is built and you have connections and you're talking to the president. It's not a biggie for God. Mm -hmm. but he wants you to wait on him because otherwise you'll think you did it so second obstruction is obstructed breathing this is this is an interesting one whenever somebody has something they're choking on right there's a hemlock removed they go across their waist and they'll push their diaphragm in really hard so they did it out their throat uh -huh. well the same thing can happen when people have what they call stressed out or toxicness there's a thing called a cleansing breath and the cleansing breath is when you focus on your stomach going in and out in very deep motions, that same diaphragm, right at the tummy. You go in and out really quick and it'll, it'll calm and take some of the toxins, they say, out of you. Well, I always think that it's interesting that God put the belt of truth around our waist. And so just like that cleansing breath, I want to know how does your belt of truth fit? Because if it's too loose, ain't nothing coming out. <laughs> if you're, lo if you're loose with out. the truth, you don't have enough diaphragm to push something out that's not working for you. And if it's too tight, 
that's, you know, you don't have ability to breathe in it anyway. Mm -mm. So make sure your belt of truth fits. That's what I would say. <laughs> Always check it. Make sure you win the truth. You know, when I say the truth, Christ, back to the anchor. So, oh, Toby, this is just yeah. amazing. In oh. just a second, I'm going to do the housekeeping. I'm going to yes. ask you to stop yes. sharing your slide. Yes, I'm and stop, then stop. I'll do the half housekeeping piece. But at, when I come back to you for just this one minute closing, I want you to share about the coaching opportunities that you provide for the the captains that uh, you coach and I'm privileged to be one. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you. We've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that all that are with us have enjoyed us, enjoyed it as well, because there's a lot of activity happening over on uh, the Facebook side of the house. And I really, really want and encourage you to go out and respond to this, uh, respond to those, um, because the, I'll lead in to my housekeeping stuff with what Stephanie and Chege said. She said, that's good, Toby. That belt of truth needs to fit and help you cleanse from all of the toxins. And that's the great opportunity that we have at Georgia Christian Business Network is we want to provide you on our Take Charge Tuesday platform, business acumen that allows you to glean from presenters that are experienced in their level, in their area of expertise. And expert knowledge is what we offer. And we want you, if you're not already a member, to join our network, gcbnetwork.com. We're focused, determined, and intentional to put God back in business. And we need your help. Join as a member. Join as a sponsor. Let someone else know if you're already a member that I'm a member of Georgia Christian Business Network, and I want to invite you to join this great community. What I also like to offer you is to join us on our platforms, uh, not only Take Charge Tuesday, but tomorrow is Wellness Wednesday. We have a fantastic four group of licensed clinical social workers, therapists, counselors that pull together with me, executive coach, to be able to talk through varying opportunities to help you develop yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, because you in essence are your business. And so we want you well. And so we do that on Wednesday platform of Wellness Wednesday. Also, we have an opportunity on this Saturday. We pushed it out to this week. This is for you to be able as a member to have a member benefit to join us at Cornerstone Coworking on, at 10 o'clock on the Saturday morning, 9.30 or 10. You can check the post uh, for Ursel Charles. He is our guest presenter and it's free for members. All you got to do is show up. We are providing virtual opportunity for you to glean because we're all over this nationally and we're going international. The other thing I'd like to remind you of is God Golfing Girls is now open for early bird registration. Get registered now so you can save some money. And we want to see you there. And please share with other people. We're hoping that God would just send forth just a greater number than last year even. We had 85 women pass through from that Friday to Saturday over the course of the weekend. And we know not just for the numbers, but there were so many opportunities that those women had to be ministered through, through the varying opportunities that presented presents themselves throughout that particular weekend. This is our ninth annual at Lake Lanier, August 16th through the 18th, and we want you there, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited about what God is doing through Georgia Christian Business Network. Toby Carvana is an amazing author, speaker, breathe coach. Or she may position that a little bit differently, but I'm going to allow her to have closing words and thank you guys for joining us. And for those watching the replay, give us a comment out there and let us know that you're there as well. Thank you, Toby. What do you say? Close thank us out. You. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, GCBN. It's been wonderful. I enjoy this. Um, mountains are calling. And I think that's the thing that we have to remember. And I am 
always available to help other people like Beth and anybody who who's going up higher. And I my my things I offer are breathe sessions. I'll call them breathe sessions, sort of like what we've done here, but going a little deeper into you and what you need from me to help you get a big breath of air that you need for your journey. And so you can rise up and go on in the name of the Lord, right? Energized and filled with purpose and passion and not dragging up and complaining. How's that? No, um, no. So yeah, just reach out to me, encouragersheart.com and, um, or just email me. I'll leave this up in the chat. And that awesome. uh, the truth of the belt, the belt of truth is from my new book. I know Beth, it's a new, another one on spiritual warfare. So there's a whole thing about that. It comes out in May. I love it. And on June, we have an opportunity for you to participate uh, at Toby's conference. Oh, yes. And would you please say that? Yes. Thank you. Oh, please. Yeah. This is the second annual, annual Encouragers Heart Conference. This is where we bring together, I bring together all the encouragers and to come together and help one another. Because sometimes out here, you can't find anybody to pour into you. But I'm going to put everybody in a room and we can help one another. And we have four speakers. Most of them are GCBN. Um, and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. And it's the tickets are open. I'll put the website in there also. Go ahead and get your ticket. I found a great place. You'll love it. I'm so excited. June 22nd, nine to three. I'm so excited and I cannot wait. Thank you guys for enduring us today a little bit over. But we appreciate you, Toby. God bless you. And thanks, everyone. Go to our website, gcbnetwork.com. We're putting God back in business. See you later. Bye-bye now.